Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about population, population pyramids, growth, and why I think Thanos' logic behind his plan to eliminate half of all beings in the universe was extremely flawed. Before I really get into the topic, I just want to let you know of a couple of assumptions I'm going to make. One being that Thanos meant only wiping out sentient beings, considering I didn't see any trees disappear when Thanos snapped his fingers, and that wouldn't really make any sense to destroy half of the food supply when you're trying to keep people from starving. Also, I can only talk about this in the context of planet Earth. Maybe his crazy plan would work on fictional planets and Earth is just different. I don't know. But anyway, let's go ahead and get right into it. This universe is finite. Its resource is finite. If life is left unchecked, life will cease to exist. It needs correction. You don't know that! So Thanos said the universe's resources are finite, and our planets are on course for overpopulation. He claims he needs to basically murder half the population of sentient beings to eliminate future suffering. But Thanos' logic was extremely flawed. For starters, if Thanos thought we were on course for overpopulation, then that would mean we must have a positive population growth rate, meaning that more humans are being born every year than they are dying. So if we have a positive population growth rate, what made Thanos think that after he killed off half the population, the population wasn't just going to eventually resume the population it once had? Right now, we have about 7.8 billion people on Earth. So if Thanos killed off half the population today, it brings us down to about 3.9 billion people. The last time the Earth had this many people was back in 1973, less than 50 years ago. In reality though, while there has been steady growth over the last 100 years, Earth's population growth is actually starting to slow. It no longer experiences the exponential growth it once had. At some point in the relatively near future, we will probably begin dropping, most likely within the next 80 to 100 years. And this won't be because of a disaster. There's a global correlation between birth rates and income, and the percentage of people in poverty has been declining for decades, and this will likely continue. The United Nations median projection of the world population plateaus around the year 2100 at around 11 billion people. The only reason population is still rising as fast as it is is not due to high birth rates, but a lowering death rate. People are living longer, but eventually that ceiling will be met. I doubt most humans will ever be able to live to be 120 or anything. 11 billion people is a number Earth can still sustain, especially as the planet becomes more and more efficient with its energy use and food production. One study even claims, with widespread sustained declines in fertility, the world population will likely peak in 2064 at around 9.7 billion, and then decline to about 8.8 .8 billion by 2100, about 2 billion lower than some previous estimates. They claim this is due to an increase in education and access to contraceptives. Italy, Spain, and Japan are actually already experiencing population declines due to a fall in birth rates. Take a look at their population pyramids. On your y-axis you have your age groups, and on the x-axis you have the percent of how much each group is of the total population. In the blue you have your male population, and in the pink you have your female population. If the pyramid fans out significantly at the bottom, this means you have a young population and you can continue to expect population growth. If there are more people in the older ages at the top, you can expect the population decline. Notice how top-heavy each of these countries' pyramids are. Now take a look at the world population pyramid over time. It starts out fanned at the bottom in the 1950s with the baby boomers, but people started having less and less kids. Let's watch this one more time sped up. So in this case, it means Thanos killing off half the population would be completely unnecessary because population is likely going to drop before a catastrophic event occurs. So whether we have population growth or no population growth, neither scenario really makes sense for what Thanos is trying to do. Now let's talk about food. We actually easily have enough food for the entire planet with plenty of cushion room. There are people starving on Earth not because we don't have enough resources, as Thanos would claim, but a lack of distribution due to a combination of geographic and economic reasons. Or, they are a result of some man-made cause, such as is the case in Venezuela in recent years. As extreme poverty continues to drop, less people are dying of starvation. This trend has continued for decades. Killing off half the population would not solve these economic problems. They would make them worse, especially in the short term. Today, most of the world's food supply is also not grown locally. It travels for miles, often from another country before reaching your table. And by killing off half the population, Thanos would have murdered billions of workers that were crucial to food production and supply chains, causing these systems to fall apart. This goes for oil too. Gas is needed to deliver your food, so if you kill off half the workers in the oil industry, we'd likely end up with a short-term shortage, even with only half the population. 
This could cause inflated gas and food prices. I think Thanos also underestimated the ability of humans to adapt and innovate. Maybe it's a little naive of me to assume humans' prosperity and quality of life will continue to progress as it has in my lifetime, but I'm sticking to my guns here. People have been saying we are going to run out of resources for generations, yet we continue to prove that we are an extremely adaptable species. The planet is slowly starting to use more renewable energy resources versus non-renewables. Even with the pressures of climate change aside, the supply and demand would slowly force us to use more renewable energy once there is a shortage of oil. We wouldn't all of a sudden hit rock bottom and there'd be some crazy catastrophe that causes widespread suffering. According to Elon Musk, we can power all of the United States with a 10,000 square mile solar farm in the middle of the desert. So why didn't Thanos just snap his fingers to make that? I know I just listed a bunch of reasons why Thanos' logic was off, but now I'll argue why there's actually a little bit of truth to Thanos' train of thought. Thanos' theory was pretty much true for most of human history, especially at the local and regional level. Easter Island is an example of this, where at one time the population was as high as 15,000, but the natives used up all of their resources, so they starved and went to war with each other. By the time Europeans arrived in 1722, there was only about 2,000 natives left. Maybe Thanos saw a similar situation about to play out on Gamora's home planet. The most famous of which, which may agree with Thanos, is British economist Thomas Malthus. He argued in an essay in 1798 that society naturally attempts to increase its population, and once a population outruns the availability and fertility of the land, a catastrophic event such as a famine or war is inevitable. I am inevitable. He claimed that a portion of the population will die as a result, bringing the population down to a level that can be sustained by the availability of food. This is what Malthus called the cycle of misery. However, Malthus' theory doesn't account for possible advances in technology, innovative agricultural practices that would improve crop efficiency, globalization that would improve diversification and distribution of food, contraceptives that would slow population growth, and economic growth combined with regulation that has helped create sustainable systems so more and more people across the globe are lifted out of poverty. Maybe these advances were a little harder for him to identify in the 18th century. Technological advances were not happening as quickly in his lifetime. Just like the thousands of years before Malthus, the fastest mode of transportation was still the horse. This is more obvious to someone living today, where we live in a completely different world than just a couple generations ago when it comes to technology. However, these are things that Thanos obviously should have noticed. Thanos is actually not the only one to use Malthusian theory for wrong in the form of harmful policies or just straight up genocide. The English used this theory to explain the Irish potato famine, where over 1 million Irish citizens died of starvation that was caused by disease-killing potatoes that the Irish were largely dependent on. Family farms were not large enough to grow more than one crop, so potatoes were the only way to feed a family. The English, who were the colonizers of Ireland at the time, thought the famine could be simply explained by the Malthusian theory, the Irish population now growing its resources. In reality, though, it was due to a lack of crop diversification and inefficient farms due to small land plots, Causes that, in hindsight, were avoidable. Because of this theory, the British refused to aid the Irish, and to make matters worse, they allowed food other than potatoes to be exported to England, and they blocked the imports from the United States into Ireland. Hitler used the theory as one of his excuses to murder millions of Jews as part of the Nazi ideology called Lebensraum, or living space. The Nazi party believed that to ensure Germany's survival, it had to exterminate or deport many of its neighbors and minority ethnic groups so that ethnic Germans could occupy their lands. Unfortunately, people today continue to use the Malthusian theory as an argument against foreign aid, even in what is typically a temporary event, such as a natural disaster. So what do you think? Do you agree Thanos' plan was flawed, or am I missing something? Did he actually have good intentions, or did he know exactly what he was doing and just wanted to murder half the universe? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe.